We're not a racist country, Brian. We've never been a racist country. Our goal is to make sure that today is better than yesterday. That is Nikki Haley yesterday saying America has never been a racist country. Less than 10 seconds later in that same answer, here's what she said also. I know I faced racism when I was growing up, but I can tell you today is a lot better than it was then. 12 hours after that, the current frontrunner for the party's nomination, Donald Trump, posted this on his social media platform, quote, anyone listening to Nikki Nimrata, Haley's whacked out speech last night, those are his words, would think that she won the Iowa primary. Notably, Trump misspelled her name, her given name, uh, in, <laughs> and he posted that as well. Well, a week ago, Trump amplified a post that insinuated Haley was ineligible to run because her parents were not citizens at the time of her birth. That, of course, is false. Unequivocally, Haley was born in South Carolina. But it's the dog whistles like this that are straight out of Trump's playbook. For years, he was full-on birther, probably still is, peddling a lie over and over that President Obama was not born in the U.S. and using his middle name for specific effect. President Barack Hussein Obama. It's no surprise that Joe Donnelly is holding a rally this weekend with Barack H. Obama. President Barack Hussein Obama. Barack Hussein Obama. Crooked Joe Biden and his boss, Barack Hussein Obama, did this to us. Let's bring back our team, Scott Jennings, Natasha Alford, Max Rose as well. Uh, Natasha, beginning with you on those comments, and we're going to pull up on the screen what she put out a statement a little bit later yesterday after a lot of backlash over her saying that. We'll, we'll show you that as soon as we have it in a second. But there's context here, too, because what she said yesterday in that interview comes just a couple weeks after her gaffe about what caused the Civil War, an answer that didn't include the word slavery. You do not deserve to be president of this country if you don't have a coherent, consistent message about race. Mm -hmm. It is just 101, right? If you're going to lead this country through a time of division and partisanship, you have to have a consistent message. And I think this is why people don't trust Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. They can't trust that she actually so says what she means and she believes, but they, they can count on her saying whatever sounds good to the audience that she's speaking to. This will not work in a general election. OK, you want to say that America was not a racist country to voters who are in Buffalo, right, and just saw people killed in the top shooting or in Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, all of these voters are out there and they want to know that you are going to tell the truth, but also that you have a message of hope for the future. Flip flopping on that doesn't earn you any respect. Especially on this issue. Yeah. Especially. Just just point of note in case people missed it. Her campaign later yesterday put out a statement that said America has always had racism but America has never been a racist country. That's even worse. <laughs> Why? It, I mean, it's just, it's talking out of both sides of your mouth. And again, we cannot trust leaders who don't actually have a vision around this, right? People are, are tired of the division. They are tired of the sort of pain and gaslighting around racism. And so if you come with a message that says, you know, we're not racist, but, you know, I had a couple experiences with racism, but it's just not cohesive, it's not coherent, and it, and it undermines mm -hmm. any sense of belief that this person actually stands on what they believe. I would, at the same time, I would venture that I don't know anybody in the Republican Party who would give that different of a message. In fact, Ron DeSantis agreed with it last night. Yeah. I think Senator Tim Scott has said similar things. Uh, no, most... Noted Republican Vice President Kamala Harris has said this is not a racist country when she and uh, Tim Scott had an, uh, a conversation about this a while back. I, I do think you can make a distinction between saying an entire country is racist versus saying that there have been individual people or moments of racism. Where I think she is in trouble on this issue is it's in her head now. The slavery thing was a real gaffe. To say that we've never been a racist country, I mean, obviously, the That's era of slavery, than not. the right. period right. after the Civil War, the rise of the Klan, I mean, we had massive bouts and, and rounds with racism. Now, you know, her party, the Republican Party, was the party that started to dig us out of that in this country yeah. and to improve us every day, which she never actually says. DeSantis says it, and I'm surprised at that because that's part of our proud history as Republicans, the fight against slavery well, and struggle. Can I just say yeah, something, but, though? I mean, we yes. talk about this as if it is the past. We are looking at, we've covered stories where people have died, have been killed because of racism. Jacksonville, Florida, the Dollar Tree shooting. I mean, this is happening mm -hmm. right now. And this is not just the black community, right? You, you, the Japanese internment. I mean, those 
families and descendants are still here. My last name is Alford, not because my family chose that last name. That is the name of the slaveholding family that owned us. I know the plantation that we are from in South Carolina, and I am here. My father desegregated a school. He remembers those things. So why do we have to talk about it as if it is past? This is right now. The pain is real. The survivors of racism, we are here, right? And so if you don't have a message around that, that talks about the future, that talks about the present, you cannot leave this country. Well, Republicans do have a message around it. And it's that, to and, ignore it. And, it's no. to say that we are colorblind, no, which and, does not and, and, solve and it, the but, problem. But it is to say that we are undoubtedly a better and stronger nation on this front today than we were 10, 20, 40, 50, 150, 180 years ago. We are undoubtedly better as an American right. people than we ever have been. And, and that will be true again tomorrow. But and that, why I think is that? that was the but point why is making. it? It's not because we ignored it. It's because people called out what was uncomfortable and they challenged the status quo and they said, we need to live up to what the American dream actually is. Those were the people who were demonized. We just celebrated Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was killed. He was killed. He was not considered a favorite or a darling of America because he stood up against racism, against poverty. And actually, the greatest threat was that he was uniting poor white people, right, with poor people of color. That was the greatest threat to America, was that he was willing to bring us together. So again, we have to move past talking about this as if it is history, as if it's not happening right now. And when the Republican Party does this colorblind thing, you're gaslighting people. And they're going to react to that, and they're going to show it at the polls. You, you know, the, the problem is, is not what you just said, right? I mean, that's a message centered around patriotism and opportunity and equity. The problem is, is that there is no leader currently in the Republican Party vying for the presidency who is saying what you just said. I mean, to openly deny that America has ever been a racist country, you know, every politician has ticks that were developed from their start in politics. And clearly what Nikki Haley saw in South Carolina 20 years ago as a person of color is she had to say things like this in order to advance early on in her career. That in and of itself is such a great tragedy. But right now, it's not just horrendous what she's saying, but it's politically stupid. I can't think of one Republican primary voter who's like, you know, I was with Trump, but then Nikki Haley said that we were never a racist country, so now I'm with her. If it would, the smart thing for her to do is to focus in on these independent, moderate voters and try to gain some momentum out of New Hampshire. That is her only hope. But then, of course, she still goes into South Carolina, her home state where she is trailing Trump by 35 points. This, this primary, unfortunately, is, is just about over. You, you do raise an interesting point about the audience in New Hampshire. She needs non-Republicans, basically, to come into this primary. And so how she addresses these kinds of topics, how she, how she addresses topics that a non-Republican audience is listening to is going to determine whether she can actually get right. close to him or not. I'm not sure it's going because well. Because undeclared at the voters could be. Yeah, they could come to right in. There. Not Democrats, but but undeclared yeah, yeah, New undeclared. Hampshire could come in. And, yeah. and and people who say, well, I don't want Trump anymore. I want to move the Republican Party past Trump. Well, you you know, you can't give answers to questions that make them say, we sound like Trump, because then they have no reason to come in and and bl th look, this is what this is what Chris Christie was saying in the hot mic the other day. I mean, this is basically why he was saying she's not up to this because she can't paint the clear choice for the actual non- Republican or anti-Trump voter. This is the tightrope she's on. And it's also why the Santos is not up to it as well. Mm -hmm. Too close to Trump. Thank mm -hmm. you guys very much for this important conversation. Appreciate it.